Welcome back to another episode of the Casey Campbell Podcast. Casey Campbell with you, of course. Pleased to be joined by the USF Juniors points leader and basically the only winner in USF Juniors history, Matt Clark. How's it going? Hey, good, man. Thank you for having me on the show. Um, so, okay, so what have you been up to? I mean, it's like we've gone through two race weekends. Um, of course, uh, the USF Juniors schedule is way different than what you know, what IndyCar is or Indy Lights or Indy Pro 2000 or USF 2000. It's because it's a brand new series. So they may race at places where you don't, that maybe those four series don't race. They, sometimes they do. They were at Barber this, this past weekend and Mac Clark, Mac Clark, not Matt, Mac. I get that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, he has won all the races so far in this uh, this brand new, newly created series that uh, the Anderson Promotions team is uh, Promotions team is along with, you know, with USAC and all of them created. So yeah, um, hope so far so good. Yeah, man, it's it's been a, a good start to 2022. Um, between you know USF Juniors and FR Americas, my schedule has been you know kind of crazy over the last few months, and really fortunate to be running in uh, in two programs with two different teams. But I mean, to start off the season in USF Juniors, uh, the goal was always you know to kind of come in and and try a few try to win a few races uh, to start it out. But I mean, until we actually got there and, and had two really good weekends uh, at Ozark International as, as well as uh, Barbara this pack, past week with IndyCar, uh, I wasn't really sure how it was gonna how it was gonna go. Yeah, and you've won all four races so far. And it, and also, so I should have asked you this before. Okay, so we know that you're racing in that series, but what else do you do? Like, tell a little bit about yourself. Um, so I'm Canadian, uh, which is you know kind of a rare thing in the in the American motorsports paddock. Um, yeah. Born just outside of Toronto, 18 years old, still in high school, as we were discussing pre-show. Uh, yeah. And in my spare time, I'm a big big fan of the NFL. That's like my second. I guess, passion, like other than racing. And a lot of Americans like that about me. Yeah. Okay. Do you have like a favorite team or do you root for your fantasy team? Like certain people? No, no, I'm not like that. Well, I, I do like my fantasy football, but I'm a, I'm a massive Buffalo Bills fan. Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I have a lot of friends that are Bills fans and, uh, and I got to say, and it's, it's fun. Um, also, there's uh there's like uh, I, I have a I have another friend of mine that is a huge huge Jets fan who absolutely despises the Bills. So really, uh, yes, I can't agree with his choices there. I I don't know. It's like yeah, I mean I don't have any Jets fans that hate Bills fan. I mean hate the Bills, but whatever. Um, um yeah. So okay. So besides that, it's like um what are you running any other series this year that you're running in racing so i've got fr america's with future star racing that's kind of like the american equivalent of like f3 um so they have fia f3 which you know follows formula one around and then they have formula regional so that happens in certain parts of the world so they got like formula regional asia formula regional europe formula regional americas so i'm fortunate enough to be running that this year with future star racing and then uh, also in the USF juniors. But I mean, to, to be honest, like if I get the opportunity to drive anything with four wheels, I'm in. Yeah. So let's talk about that this year. When did you get this opportunity? Uh, okay. I should have, I should, we should have mentioned what car do you drive? Like what team do you drive? I, for, for people that don't know, I know, obviously, but. <laughs> um, I drive in USF juniors. I drive the number 17 Valkyrie AI D force racing car. Um, and then FR America's this year for the 2022, 20, 22 season. Uh, I'm driving the number 25 future star racing car. Nice. Of course. Uh, of course, D force racing has been a staple in, uh, in the road to Indy series, whether it's in, it's in Indy pro or USF, um, now USF juniors, they've been, uh, they've been a, they've been a pretty good team so far this season. What made, what made you want to, when, when you want to try this? So the first time I actually drove like a proper open wheel car, like slick tires, wings, everything that was with DeForce racing down in Texas. Um, and that was, two years ago i guess now in preparation for the richard mile young talent academy um so i had a chance to go down there meet the guys meet ernesto and david the uh the two team owners and i mean right away you know gelled with the guys awesome and this year you know with the formation of a new series in usf juniors it just felt supernatural i mean i competed against them last year um 
so it was kind of ironic in a way, right? Because in 2021, we were, you know, banging fists the whole year. And at the end, we shook hands and I knew the guys already. So uh, super fortunate to put the program together for 2022. And they're, uh, they're my new family for this year. Yeah, for sure. Um, so where do, so explain where the USF junior season goes next. We go to VIR next in June, which I am pumped for because I love that track. Yeah, a lot of people do love that track. It's it's pretty unique, man. Like it, it's got a lot of high speed corners, but it's also got some technical sections, lots of elevation. And I think uh, I was talking to Rob Howden, who does uh, a lot for the the Road Dandy, oh, and I think the racing, like the wheel to wheel action, is going to be really good at VIR and USF Juniors. Can you do a Rob Howden impression? I mean, I I, I don't know. If, uh, my favorite <laughs> thing about Rob, like like he has like signature phrases, like when he says like green, 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 like. I don't know, man. Like I get goosebumps. Yeah, ex- exactly. Yeah. I just found, I, yeah, you know, I just found out yesterday. I could, I, you know, I don't know. We'll we'll talk <laughs> about it later. Um, so let's let's go into what 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 could this do for you? So obviously, you know, USF Juniors, you could go into the next level, USF two thousand, if you win the championship. I, th- I think that's what what happens if that happens. Yes, sir. Um, so obviously the progression up the ladder you go and obviously if everybody anybody knows the road to indie ladder it's basically you win a championship in that series you can you take the next level and eventually it will lead you up to indycar um obviously that's the path that i think you want to go where what are we're going you're going to places that indycar doesn't really race. vir and i know imza races there but um, what's that? I know you're going to a lot of tracks. I think Mid Ohio is on the schedule. I believe New Jersey is on the schedule as well. You're going to a lot of technical tracks. Well, what's that going to be like for you? And what, how are you? What are what are you most excited for? I think Mid Ohio is always a good one. Um, I went to Mid Ohio for the first time last year, and we were successful that weekend. And it, it's so technical. It's such a driver's track. But you know, like you said. I think the mindset's a, a little different, you know, when you head to those really technical tracks, especially when you know uh, you're running for a championship. I think it's important that you're finishing every race, that, you know, you're finishing in, in decent position. And for me, um, a lot about that, especially in our new series, is doing your homework, I call it, right? So watching video from the previous year, watching video that the team has, making sure I'm looking at data, writing notes. Like, I, I like to do a lot of work before I actually get to the circuit and, and unload for the weekend. Yeah, for sure. Um you talk about when, when we looked at us of juniors, it's a lot of young kids, but it's not really, I mean, young kids, like, you know, 21, 19, 18, but obviously no, no, there's a you know, a lot of younger kids in there too. I mean, you, I mean, you're 18, you know, Andre Castro's in his, I mean, obviously mid twenties, Nick, Nick D Orlando, 19, but there's also some guys that are younger who may have, you may recognize if you follow uh, the F4 championship series, uh, a lot of those, a lot of the drivers came from there as well. But what's it like? It's a big, wide range of ages in that series. No, for sure. Like we have a a mass diversity of drivers. Like not only people from different backgrounds and and different places across the world, but like you said, like big age gaps as well. Like I think our youngest drivers, like fourteen or fifteen, our oldest drivers, like twenty four. So like I'm, I'm kind of right in the middle there. But it's uh, it's cool, you know you you meet certain drivers that you race against and, and uh, you know, a, a few of them you gel with and you can have some fun off track. Like I've got two brand new teammates this year and in, uh, in D-Force racing with, with Jake Bonilla and, and Maxwell Jameson. And I mean, I've been getting along really well with those guys. So it's, uh, it's nice to have some friends at the racetrack too. And then of course the last race this season, I mentioned where you guys are going, you're going to go to Coda. I'm pumped for that. That track is epic. We went there last year in the F4 US championship um, for the season finale with Formula One, and that was an unforgettable. Experience. Did you get to meet a Formula One driver? Pardon? Did you get to see any Formula One drivers? I did. So I got to meet, um, long story short, my uncle does work in England, um, and it's actually like he's he works as a third party kind of like and does work for Williams F1. Um, so I got like a full tour of the garage and, and uh, I got to meet uh, Nikki and I saw Alex or um, sorry, not Alex Albon. Um, yes. Yeah, sorry. George Russell. And uh, no, that, that was a super cool experience. So shout out to my uncle Al for that one. 
Okay, yeah, obviously Nick Latifi, somebody um, obviously, of course, Canada, the Canada connection um, there. But okay, so how'd you become a Bills fan? Okay, so I knew nothing about football like three years ago. It was bad. Oh, really? um, yeah. So like before it was just kind of like, as long as you know about it now. Exactly. So I was just kind of like live, like breathe racing. And then like three years ago, all my buddies like, like back, like you have to get into fantasy football with us. And I'm like, well, this costs money. And I know nothing about football. So I have to learn about football. So I did my homework. I drafted, uh, I got to know a few players and then immediately like the bills kind of stood out to me because they're close to Toronto and I like a lot of their players, like massive fan of Josh Allen, massive fan of Stephon Diggs, even the defense, like Tredavious White, yeah. top five corner in the NFL, oh, yeah. in my opinion. Oh, yeah. So, did you did you did you were you, were you bouncing off walls when Von Miller came there? Dude, I okay. Well, I think that we overpaid him, but still happy because I think the Bills are going to have a decent a decent shot this year the Super Bowl. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, they should have won and not. No, nah, and I don't know. I don't know. I just it's it's something, but I think you just think the AFC is just going to be so dangerous this year, where every single team is so free. But but I just think that that like in the and I hear from a lot of people, it's like they're the Bills and Dolphins are in their own category, and then there's the Patriots and Jets. Um, all four teams, I think, are going to be good. I think they'll all be decent. I think the Jets drafted really well. I think the Patriots did not. Um, and I think the Bills did, did okay in the draft. Well, the Bills have – I mean, the Bills were already pretty good anyway. So. Exactly. But yeah. – No, I'm happy to be a Bills fan. Yeah, of course. And there's nothing like it. Um, I'm, I'm just – I just I, – I don't know. I just uh, – I, I just watch football. I just – you know, I love the sport, but I just can't – I just can't get behind a team. Like, when you get behind a team – you're always disappointed. And obviously I'm from Michigan. So obviously, you know, from, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. no, I do not root for the. <laughs> oh man. My, my cousin who's actually like, like lives relatively close to me and you know he grew up, he's Canadian. He's just like a massive Detroit Lions fan. And, and anytime I see him, I find a way to, you know, like stab him, like bring up pain. Biting knee, well, well, I don't know. Well, he keeps talking about. Does he keep talking about biting kneecaps off? No, but I, he was pretty pumped with the draft, to be honest. Like they're gonna have a good player, and he'll, talk, uh, well, he'll probably start talking about biting kneecaps off because that's what uh, I mean. Obviously, I think he's excited about uh, hard, the hard knocks thing. Obviously, oh, if, sure. you, if you've listened to Coach, um, of course, Coach Dan Campbell, no relation by the way. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's gonna be uh, be an, it could be an interesting season for them for sure. I think so. I think so. Uh, all right. Matt Clark, thank you so much for coming on and talking with us. And we'll, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Good luck at, uh, good luck at VIR in, a, in, a, in about a month. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Pleasure. Uh, pleasure being here on the show.